again everyone and thanks so much for joining us for this Saturday edition of Alaska Weather, this Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. On the second day of November 2019, I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service and I'll be hosting today's show. And uh, of course, uh, that time of year again in the fall to uh, turn the clock back an hour and that goes into effect tonight. So before you go to bed tonight, uh, turn your clock back one hour. Uh, and uh, it'll be darker an hour earlier tomorrow evening than it will be this evening. <laughs> and for the uh, watch warning chart here, or the hazardous weather graphic, got uh, winter weather advisories in effect that kick into effect for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast for tonight, actually midnight tonight until midnight Sunday night. And that's uh, another low tracking eastward there across the Arctic Ocean and in close enough high pressure over the interior. So that's going to create enough of a gradient to get those winds back up in the 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gust range along with uh, some new snow. So that'll create uh, reduced visibilities. And hence we got the winter weather advisory up for 24 hours starting midnight tonight. And on satellite imagery, you can see uh, kind of uh, some bands moving from west to east here with the westerly flow in the Arctic jet up there along the Arctic coast. Uh, one band right through here, another one right there, and then uh, the main low still farther back to the northwest there. Otherwise, to the south, high pressure building in over the interior, drying it out. Still some lingering light stuff here in the way of uh, flurries or snow showers or just uh, maybe a little bit steadier light snow, but nothing too uh, significant, at least uh, through the daytime today. And then moisture with a warm front down here mainly uh, hitting Kodiak Island. They had some moderate rain this afternoon. It picked about a third of an inch in six hours. And lighter amounts, just a couple hundredths of an inch, for example, only four hundredths of an inch falling today at Cordova. So most of that moisture sliding northeastward. They're taking a turn to the east and uh, pushing in, will we'll be pushing in toward the southeast coast here later on. Kind of a let up today, although Wrangell picked up a third of an inch of precipitation here with that uh, moisture slipping on off to the east, kind of a weak frontal boundary in there today. And uh, otherwise, uh, up to the north, Juneau had about, uh, oh, let's see, what was it? Um, 1,200 hundredths of an inch. And that, again, 12 hour amount ending at three o'clock this afternoon. Otherwise, by contrast, just a hundredth of an inch at uh, Metlakatla. And for the uh, chart today, here's the rain up across uh, Kodiak Island. Uh, moderate times there on the uh, southern coast on up to the state airport associated with this warm front and then uh, really kind of tapers off here into the panhandle this afternoon. Uh, not much, just mostly clouds and lighter amounts of rain. And then with this uh, weakening trough in the uh, across southern Alaska, red areas of light snow, about uh, an inch of snow or so, one to two inches at the most, falling uh, in and around Delta Junction, for example. Otherwise, uh, other amounts are quite light and uh, pretty good break here, as you can see, high pressure building eastward in from the Russian Far East in toward the Bering Strait, Seward Peninsula, and other center developing here over the northeast interior. And that uh, dried it out and uh, began to clear the skies out as well here. And the northeast flow clearing it out along the coast as well uh, with uh, Macoriak seeing clear skies today with uh, visibilities down around, uh, or visibilities about unlimited. Although uh, northeast winds 15 to 25 miles an hour, temperature right at the uh, freezing mark here at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Otherwise, a few isolated showers of this trough from the southwest, uh, or from west Togiak Bay back out toward, uh, out into the open water there, actually extending down four, four hundredths of an inch, fell in a shower in Alaska today. And uh, otherwise out west, not a lot going on out there. Weak system brought some rain in with uh, winds gusting 25, 30 miles an hour at Shimia. And that's about it for the storm is, and that, that will weaken. 
And then the uh, moisture up here along the Arctic coast for tonight, you'll see the low make an appearance up there just north of uh, the east, east central coast, about the central coast trough. So periods of light snow, uh, increasing winds, especially after midnight on the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. You won't see those winds increase over the uh, much of the north slope or back to the west. And uh, chance of that snow getting down toward the uh, Brooks Range across the north slope, but whatever it does will be nothing more than flurries. And still some lingering flurries or snow showers here over the eastern interior, but the trend is for uh, clearing skies uh, to advance uh, eastward and a little bit to the south. So it'll be mostly cloudy with some diminishing rain or snow showers. It'll be scattered around the Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound, possibly the Copper River Basin. And uh, rainfall uh, just grazing the south and east side of Kodiak Island, this oscillating warm front here and then isolated showers southeast Bering Sea, really all away from any land areas. Look for light winds in the central Aleutians, light precipitation of that trough, and lower flying conditions out over the far western Aleutians and Bering Sea. And then rain with this uh, weak low pushing in toward the pan, and it looks like periods of rain kind of increasing again tonight uh, and extending from Dixon entrance all the way up uh, the Klondike Highway to Skagway, Yakutat right at the cutoff point. And then for uh, tomorrow, we'll see this low tracking eastward now, slowly. And a pretty good gradient there, 1,022, not really all that deep of a surface low, but it's uh, it compared to the 1,036 millibar high. And that could be good for gusts in the 35 to maybe 50 mile an hour range tops out of the west there for the uh, eastern Beaufort Sea. So light amounts of snow again could pick up one to probably less than two inches and uh, that will be blowing around reducing visibilities. Otherwise a much weaker trough will bring a chance of light snow or flurries to the uh, northwest coast here. Kivalina, Point Hope, Cape Lisbon, and Point Lay with uh, snow showers or light snow for the central and eastern north slope. But south of the mountains uh, tomorrow you'll see uh, mostly clear skies and northeast winds 15-25 miles an hour. Uh, here along the coast, could see gusts of 30 miles an hour like uh, Kipnik saw this afternoon, but that's going to push the clear skies all the way out to the Pribilof Islands and possibly to the eastern Aleutians. And then this warm front coming back to the north uh, will bring the heavier rain back into Kodiak Island and try to push into southern Cook Inlet, but uh, probably Seldovia has a better chance of rain and it's not that great of a chance than Homer does, but just a risk. Otherwise, partly cloudy along the North Gulf Coast into the northern Panhandle, and then that rain uh, starting to taper off again over the southern southeast coast. And taking a look at uh, Monday's forecast, uh, frontal boundary still hung up there and kind of uh, surges of moisture and uh, coming along that from west to east, traveling along the front there. So more rain likely, lighter in the north there, much lighter in the north, actually getting into more of kind of an offshore flow there with lower snowfall levels. So I might have probably should have extended pink into the northern areas there, but that would be, should wait and see if they actually get that much moisture up there. Otherwise, better chance down to the south, maybe a quarter to third of an inch, and that's about it. Wind and rain come back up to the Alaska Peninsula associated with this system here. Stays dry, mostly clear southeast Bering Sea. Good ridging light winds over the central Bering, and all the storminess stays well to the west and also starts to pull up to the north, so the Arctic coast will see an improvement with uh, most of the snow pulling off the coastline, uh, at least by afternoon. Lows tonight, uh, below zero now, minus three into Tanana for the low tonight, three above for Fairbanks, so definitely cooler air coming in with that uh, upper low tracking eastward in the northwest Arctic jet there. Mild, still above freezing, southern Alaska, south of the uh, Alaska range, mid 40s Kodiak, 40s for the Panhandle, and the highs, uh, for tomorrow afternoon, single numbers and lower teens, but 20s along the Arctic coast. Lower 40s again here southern Alaska to near 50 in the Panhandle, and maybe the Alaska Peninsula. Lows the following morning, a little chillier, uh, 5 to 20 below here up over the northeast and in the teens in the Arctic coast. Lower 30s there, southern Alaska. And for the highs, 45 to 50 in the Panhandle, a little above zero over the northeast interior and anywhere from uh, quite a range there, depending how close you are to the water on the Arctic coast. But uh, 45 to 50, Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula, even in the lower 50s. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Flying weather graphic, first flying weather graphic, Sunday morning, a good swath of VFR here due to the northeast winds. 
uh, from Nunavak Island, uh, not quite to the Pribilofs, so back up into the uh, north central interior until you get to the Brooks Range. Marginal VFR from there on out, some IFR to start here over the uh, upper Tanoff Valley 40 mile country down to maybe possibly into the Copper River Basin. Otherwise, VFR, Susitna Valley, most of Cook Inlet, marginal Kodiak, marginal out west, Bering Sea and the Aleutians. IFR, southern southeast coast, and some IFR also up there to the north, but uh, afternoon, that becomes VFR over the northern half of the panhandle with the IFR lingering to the south. VFR, North Gulf Coast, uh, much of the interior here. Uh, marginal VFR now slowly improving throughout the afternoon, but hanging on to marginal there over the east side. And patch of IFR there on the eastern Brooks Range, otherwise marginal for the North Slope and Arctic Coast. Marginal VFR, St. Lawrence Island, Bering Sea, and the Aleutians. Mostly areas of, probably won't be solid marginal VFR, be some VFR thrown in there as well. And for Monday morning, not much change out west here, except the uh, VFR is well west and south of the Pribilofs now, back in across much of uh, the interior. Marginal VFR uh, edging up into southern Kenai Peninsula, Kamishak Bay, IFR there along the east and southeast side of Kodiak Island, and uh, marginal VFR from the Brooks Range on out to the Arctic coast, mostly VFR now for the Panhandle. And then that changes Monday afternoon with some IFR uh, sliding on in and northward, becoming uh, well, fairly widespread. Also some areas of marginal VFR and IFR here over southern Alaska, mostly VFR again from the southwest coast in Vac Island up to the northeast. And now some VFR breaking out over the uh, north slope areas, mostly marginal over the Bering Sea. Again, mixed in with some VFR and some IFR, especially way out west. And for the passes, Anatuvik, uh, Possible IFR on the northern approach of both Anatovic and Attigan, otherwise uh, marginal through the pass, VFR just south of the uh, southern entrance on both passes. Lake Clark and Merrill, VFR tomorrow. Good VFR for rainy. And windy also VFR. Uh, Isabel starting out marginal, becoming VFR. And for Mentasta, marginal VFR to start. Possibly IFR, and then becoming VFR latter part of the afternoon. Tanita. Marginal VFR, possibly, but definitely IF, or VFR most of the day tomorrow. Just a chance of some marginal VFR to start with early on. And then for Portage, VFR. Chilkoot and White, marginal VFR uh, early, becoming VFR late morning and through the afternoon. Freezing levels, a little cooler air now, that Arctic jet pushing the colder air into the interior. So 2,000 feet, though. Uh, still into the Susitna Valley areas and the surface right on its heels here, but down to the northern Bristol Bay and then quite a gradient here across the Gulf of Alaska, four to uh, 6,000 feet or two to uh, 8,000 feet across the panhandle. Icing, uh, moisture here sliding northward around this big area of high pressure over the Northeast Pacific and then what's left of that frontal boundary keeps a chance of some uh, isolated moderate rime icing over the southern southeast coast. A bare chance of considerable moderate rime icing. Possible southern Kodiak Island, a little bit up the east side there. And then some lighter stuff into the Aleutian Range, maybe Bristol Bay. And just a slight chance of some icing up there, north slope. A couple of weak surges of uh, moisture passing by from west to east. And the uh, jet stream showing the uh, upper low associated with that and the cooler temperatures is pulling down into the least of the central interior areas and 140 knot jet west northwesterly high pressure northeast uh, pacific up into uh, up in the cross southern Alaska 9,000 feet uh, westerlies 35 to 40 central and southern southeast coast there pretty light 5 to 15 knots over the interior except uh, farther to the northeast 20 to 25 eastern arctic coast light winds Bristol Bay light winds Bering Sea light winds in the Aleutians 3,000 feet, same pattern, except up here central, mostly the eastern Boulevard Sea coast, uh, west-northwest 20 to 25 with this system pulling off to the east. High pressure though, 5 to 10 knots over the interior. 25, uh, trying to get up to the Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak not quite making it, northeast 15 to 20 there over the southeast Bering Sea. Westerly 25 to 30 knots in across the southern panhandle. Otherwise pretty light here over the Gulf of Alaska, maybe 20 knots or Kodiak Island turbulence wise. Light to, isolated, light to isolated moderate chop, uh, eastern Beaufort Sea coast, uh, southwest Kodiak Island along the Alaska Peninsula, and also over the southern southeast coast. So my heart is definitely racing. I don't know about anyone else's. This is the stuff nerds dream of. 10 seconds. 9, 
eight, seven, six, That's gonna five, happen. four, three, two. That countdown you just heard? We'll get back to that in a minute. Last episode, we saw the epic launch of ISAT-2, NASA's newest state-of-the-art ice-observing satellite. But now that that's in orbit, the pressure to deliver results is on. Between launch and, you know, the first ground returns, you know, it took 17, 18 days or something like this. You know, it's a time when you're quite nervous. Nine years ago, Dr. Torsten Marcus took over as the lead project scientist for ISAT-2 during a time when the mission needed a champion. You start fighting for a mission over, you know, for nine years now. So when ISAT-2 was turned on for the first time 18 days after it was launched, only then would the science team know if the whole thing had worked. And it did. If it sounds like there's a lot of noise in the background, that's because Torsten is being interviewed from a plane 1,500 feet in the air. IceBridge was tasked with the job of bridging the data between the end of ISAT's mission and the beginning of ISAT-2, about a nine-year difference. The goal is that it would run until ISAT-2 launched and then would have overlap with ISAT-2 as well, so we can get a really long, well-calibrated time series from IceBridge. As the deputy project scientist for Operation IceBridge, Brick works closely with Torsten to make sure the two missions are syncing up. The timing was everything at, 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 during that mission, which was a real challenge because not only need, do we need to... Basically what you need to take away is getting an airplane and a satellite in space to fly over the same flight path at the same time and collect matching data is really, really hard. IceBridge was tasked with two objectives. Check the accuracy of ISAT-2's data over land ice and over sea ice. They were able to lock in the land ice data fairly quickly in the mission, but the sea ice data... It was really tricky. We waited day after day. Do we fly the sea ice? It's still on our list. Seven, six, That's gonna five, happen. four, three, two, one. Mark on the overpass, zero, four, three, five, three, five, Zulu. Here's what just happened. A plane 1,500 feet up and a satellite 308 miles up measured the same sea ice at the same time. This moment finally linked veteran mission Operation IceBridge's data to that of its new sister mission, ISAT-2. Two projects that, until now, were separate for nearly 10 years. It's a very satisfying feeling because you do something that is meaningful and in the, in the, in the bigger picture. And yeah, it's very satisfying. Our search for knowledge doesn't end here. Grace follow on and ISAT-2, the two satellite missions that launched this year, will continue to bring in incredible data for the foreseeable future. The steady drumbeat of campaigns in the field goes on, but most of all, the people who look for answers will never stop searching. And from our perspective, it's pretty clear why. My favorite planet is the planet Earth. What? Earth? <laughs> really? The Earth, obviously. Favorite planet in the solar system? Earth, right? We live on it, it's a really important one. Favorite planet is Earth. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so what? when you look out at the other planets, they're absolutely fascinating. They've got all sorts of interesting systems going on. They've got dust storms. But then when you're on another planet, looking back at Earth, I mean, it's just incredible. Whenever you go in different places, it looks so different, so amazing. It's just, I love to find that Earth is just a very special planet. This is our home. We've seen things far beyond the solar system. But even with all that, even the amazing things we've seen, one of the most amazing is the Earth itself. It's got to be Earth. It's got to be Earth. It's got to be here. I like the polar regions up here. 
of, of Earth. Earth. Yeah. yeah, sorry. It's very boring. Earth is good. Earth is good. We live here, it sustains our life. I'm not going to turn my back on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's got water, it's got ice, it's got, um, it's got vegetation. I mean, it's just, it's rich with life. Uh, and so studying Earth is, is, is a very, very rewarding career. And I think if we were on any other planet, we would be trying to get to Earth as quickly as we could. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at uh, today's sea ice analysis. Not a lot changed from yesterday. Uh, slowly growing here and kind of uh, coming to the uh, south-southwest a little bit. This area coming uh, to the south-southeast a little bit, but it's slow all along the ice edge there. And uh, not expecting anything additional here along the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Uh, anything significant at all for the next five days. And for the coastal water forecast here, southern, central and south coast, west, 25 knots, small craft advisories with 9 to 10 foot seas. Uh, swinging around to the east at 25 knots uh, tomorrow, but then really dropping off as you head north up there toward Yakutat, northeast at 15. North 15 for northern Lynn Canal, kind of a variable, light variable wind pattern for the central and side waters, and then Clarence Strait south at 15. Outlook for Monday, light north winds, 10 knots for Clarence Strait. West winds at 20 on the south coast, turning southeast or east southeast 20 knots on the north coast. And uh, again, with that uh, high building over the Yukon, increasing gradient and outflow wind. So, north 35 knots, gale force, gales, war, <laughs> gale warnings for Lynn Canal, north 35 knots, and the winds coming up to about 20 knots for Stevens Passage. And for Prince William Sound, light north winds at 10 tomorrow. Same thing for the eastern North Gulf Coast. Light northeast winds, 10 to 15 knots, western North Gulf Coast of the Barren Islands. Northeast at 20 for Kamishak Bay and southern Cook Inlet. Those seas running at about five feet. And for northern Cook Inlet, north winds uh, only 10 knots with seas three feet. Monday out, Monday's outlook uh, for Cook Inlet, uh, north of the Forelands there, northeast at 15, three foot seas, but small craft advisories there. Southern Cook Inlet here, 25 knot winds, seas up to 6 feet, and also 25 knot winds into Kamishak Bay. East, 25, small craft advisories for the Barrens with seas approaching 10 feet. And for the uh, western North Gulf Coast, winds will be northeast to 20, seas at 8 feet, and uh, northeast 15, a little bit of an increase there for Prince William Sound, but not much. And then the uh, Middleton Island zone there, east at 20. And for Kodiak Island, east winds 25 tomorrow on the east side, Chillicoff Strait northeast 25, and uh, Sitkanak to Castle Cape east at 25 knots, 10 foot seas. Alaska Peninsula northeast winds 25 to 30 knots, strongest on the south side here with 11 foot seas. Small craft advisories for Bristol Bay, winds out of the northeast at 25 knots. That'll hold through Monday there for Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula northeasterlies at 30 knots with 9 to 11 foot seas. Also, Shelikoff Strait, northeast winds at 30 knots, seas 8 feet, otherwise east 20 here for the uh, remainder of the Kodiak Marine areas, and also that'll extend all the way down to Castle Cape. And for the uh, Fox Islands, on Alaska Island, northeast 25 to north 30 knots on the south side, Unmak Island, north 25, so averages out just small craft advisories, both islands there, seas 7 to 11 feet. Uh, lighter winds for Adak and Atka. In fact, Atka probably see the 20 knot winds, call it 15 out of the north for Adak, and then light west of there becoming south 15 as you get it back over towards Shimia. And the outlook for Monday, southeast uh, possibly coming up to 30 knots west of Kiska Island, otherwise pretty light northeast 15, Kiska toward Adak, and then the uh, central Aleutian forecast north to northeast 25 to 30 knots, sees 9 to 11 feet. Even stronger winds in store for the uh, Fox Islands with gale warnings for those northeast winds at 35, south side of the islands, north side, north-northeast at 30 knots, 
sea's 12 feet and uh, about the same there in the Pacific. And for the southwest coast, northeast winds tomorrow, 20 knots. Blow right out across the Pribilof Islands, same speed, five to six foot seas, 15 knot winds for St. Lawrence Island, as well as St. Matthew Island, Norton Sound up to about 20 knots. And for Monday, the winds here for the, along the uh, Yukon Cuscombe Delta coastline, Nunavak Island come north northerly, 25 knots, small craft advisories also for the Pribilofs, northeast 25 also for St. Matthew Island, St. Lawrence Island and Norton Sound, both northeast winds in the forecast at 20 knots with four foot seas. And from Wales up to Cape Thompson, south 15, Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort, light southwest breeze at 10, and then the western Arctic coast, northwest 15, picks up to 20 knots on the central coast, eastern Beaufort Sea coast, west 25 knots, sea six to seven feet. And then lighter winds in store for Monday there, west southwest 15 to 20, turning mostly south at 20 knots on the central coast, Southwest 20 on the west side here, all the way down to Cape Thompson, and then from Cape Thompson to Wales, winds will be southerly at four, or at, at 15 knots with four foot seas. And for tonight, uh, again after midnight, uh, wind weather advisory for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast there for uh, winds kicking up uh, at least gust to 40, maybe even higher. Uh, and that stays out uh, through tomorrow until midnight tomorrow night. Areas of light snow with uh, nothing more than one, maybe two inches at uh, tops, even lighter down toward the Brooks Range. South of the mountains, though, mostly dry, clear, and getting colder. Some areas dropping below zero in the central interior tonight. Getting pretty close to zero there for Fairbanks as these clouds slowly pull off to the east along with the showers. Chance of rain, Panhandle, chance of rain, Kodiak Island becomes 100% uh, chance of rain tomorrow for Kodiak Island. 100% chance of sun here for the southern, southern Alaska and the southwest coast of the Pribilofs. High pressure, light winds in the Bering Sea. Rain chances, uh, again, sagging southward over the panhandle, but then return. Kind of hard to tell how far north that gets. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.